Hello and welcome to Falmouth Community Television's discussion with government leaders. I'm Eileen Preston. And today, our subject is rather complicated, county government. But here, to uncomplicate it, we've gone to the top executive leader of Barnstable County, chair of the regional commissioners, Mark Forrest. Mark Forrest, thanks very much for being here with us today. Eileen, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to having this conversation about county government, how it works, and to try to demystify it for people here. In yeah, it's a little mystifying, isn't it? Uh, so having you here yeah. to teach us about county government is a little bit like having maybe Sully teach us how to land a plane on the Hudson because you are oh, the pro, okay? You're very kind. Just so people know before we do the deep dive, um, your bio, you have been a select board member, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. to two, not one, but two Cape Cod towns, a town administrator or town manager for not one, but two Cape Cod towns, and a congressional aide to not one, but two U.S. representatives okay. to Congress. Is All that right. right? We're close. We're close. Okay. Um, I'm a selectman in the town of Yarmouth, okay. just one town. Oh, okay. But well, I have... Um, getting lazy. No, that's, no, that's, I'm slowing. yeah, that's one way to look at it. Um, but I've been a, a municipal manager in several towns on Cape Cod and, uh, and, uh, I've had a, a, I've been very fortunate. I've worked with some great local officials and in some great communities. And, uh, but my bulk of, the bulk of my career has been basically working for two, uh, United States congressmen and, um, helping manage constituent services and programs, you know, in a congressional office and spending many years on Capitol Hill. Yeah, you've, you've done it all. You really are. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've done it all, but, I, yeah. but, I've, but I've enjoyed actually serving with two congressmen and us collectively serving the people of Cape Cod. Delahunt and Studs, right? Correct. Yeah, great. Okay, so I'm going to let you just dive in and take it over because you're our county boss. So, well, you're here very we go. Kind. You're very kind. So let's, let's start off. Let's fly the plane, shall we, okay. Captain? Okay, let's do that. Okay, what I'd like to do is just to get up on the screen. Uh, I've got a number of slides. I'd like to start with the first one, if we can get that up on the screen. And this is, um, yeah. this, is the, this is the cover, the Barnstable County. Let's start right here with uh, this slide. Um, the county encompasses basically the 15 towns of Cape Cod and uh, all the land and waters identified within this sort of geographic area. We have a population of 232,400 people and we are the ninth most populated county in the state of Massachusetts out of the 14 counties based on the last census. Um, it's also important to note that the county has uh, one of the few parts of the Commonwealth that's actually had a growth spurt. We've had a significant in-migration during COVID. COVID. Right. Yeah. Next slide. Uh, we call Barnstable County government a success story. That's because a uh, county government has generally been phased out in Massachusetts in most areas, but here in Barnstable County, county government, regional government has been thriving. The next slide. Um, when our county was established, it was 1685. Mm -hmm. We're roughly 338 years old, when you think about it. And it began as part of Plymouth County. And when uh, the Massachusetts State Legislature was established, the county became a subdivision of state government. And it, its existence it depended uh, then, as it does now, on uh, the, the state legislature's will. And our early missions, in the early days, we were focused on making sure we had courthouses, uh, we had jails, and roads. Yeah. So the early mission of county government has evolved significantly over the years, and uh, that's what we started out doing. So over 300 years later, when we look at uh, where we are today, uh, Barnstable County now operates under a home rule charter that was established in, and approved by the voters in 1988 and it changed the role of county government here in Barnstable County. Uh, the charter created a structure that would exist essentially to address regional issues. These are the issues that basically transcend the existing political boundaries of our communities. Right, things that one town couldn't handle on its own. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So um, water supply protection, solid waste, yeah. uh, dealing with groundwater contamination, wastewater and so forth. There are a whole range of issues here on Cape Cod that sort of transcend the boundaries 
of an individual town. Emergency planning, just things exactly. like hurricanes, that type of thing, right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, the next slide, I have a chart. This is our organizational chart. I think it's very common. Mm -hmm. If, um, you know, in looking at an organization to kind of get a sense of the organization, how it's structured. So obviously at the top, you'll see the voters because uh, the officials that run the county are elected. Um, we have an assembly of delegates, uh, which is comprised of representatives from each of the individual Cape Cod towns. Um, we have a board of commissioners and we hire an administrator. And then we also hire a, the director of the Cape Cod Commission, which is our regional planning agency. And then there is a registry of deeds and the registrar is uh, elected by the voters. And then below us, uh, us elected officials are a host of departments. Uh, which we will uh, go over in a minute. But real quickly, we have Children's Cove, Cooperative Extension, a Dredge Department, a Facilities Department, Finance Department, Health and Environmental, Human Services, Information Technology, and Public Safety Training. These are the departments that basically provide services to uh, constituents, individual residents here on Cape Cod, but also to the towns, the municipalities. So if we can stay on that slide for just a second. Sure. Assembly of Delegates would be sort of the legislature. Board of Regional Commissioners, those three people are um, the executive branch. Right. And there's the Registry of Deeds over there. And Cape Cod Commission is not, um, the voters don't pick Cape Cod Commission. Those are picked by you, the commissioners. Well, the director is, is, is a hire of the commissioners, but the individual town selectmen, the air various boards actually choose their representative to the Cape Cod Commission, or a selectman may decide that, you know, they want to have one of their own serving, but it's their appointment. Okay, great, great. Just yeah, and the clear. Assembly of Delegates, um, you could say they're the legislative body, and you would say that the Board of Commissioners is the executive, executive body. Yeah. And in our charter, um, it's, it's very directly expressed that we should more or less operate much like a much l a larger municipal government, even though we're a regional government and we have um, our unique set of laws and statutes um, but the powers of the executive are often referred to as uh, very similar to, to, to select boards. Okay. So on the next slide, we have uh, just a brief coverage of the, uh, our assembly, the legislative branch. Mm -hmm. You'll see that its primary responsibility is to basically vote on uh, our budget and appropriations. Uh, they sign off on leases for county property and the borrowing of money. And so each of the towns selects a delegate or elects a delegate. Mm -hmm. Those elections are in the November election. So when we, on an even numbered year, when That's we have right. an election in November, um, your delegate will be on the ballot. We just got one, Dan Gesson, right? Yes, mm -hmm. Dan Gesson for Falmouth. Mm -hmm. uh, in Bourne, we have George Slade. And um, in some of our towns, quite frankly, we also, we have a mix of representatives on the assembly. Uh, several of them either are selectmen or were selectmen mm -hmm. and the value of having a selectman on the assembly is that they are very familiar with municipal government and municipal government needs and it's important that the county be attentive to the needs of the towns right that's one of the reasons why i think there's a real value in my having been a manager on the cape having been um, a selectman um, obviously i come to a county commissioner's role and position uh, being very familiar with the county government and the needs of the towns. So one town might really need sewers. One right. town might really be struggling with PFAS or some such thing. Right, exactly. Okay. And, there'll right. Be, and I think when we go into some of the departments, we can talk a little bit Absolutely. about how those services. It. So let's go on to the next slide. Uh, so the executive branch, this is the Board of Commissioners. There are three. Uh, we are elected for four-year terms and they're staggered. Um, the powers and duties very simply involve preparing the annual budget, uh, providing direct care and control and supervision of our county property. Uh, we oversee the revenues of the county and oversee expenditures. And to help us do all this work, we have a county administrator. Next slide. When you look at the size of county government, we have 243 full and part-time employees and 15 seasonal employees. Our FY24 operating budget is roughly $22,476,000. Mm. Now that might seem like a lot of money, but um, I would say that uh, in putting it in perspective, it's 
less than the operating budget for the town of Truro. Oh, thank you for putting that in perspective. Right. My goodness. So right. that's got to spread to 15 Exactly. Towns. So we have a, you know, comparatively speaking, a budget less than the town of Truro. And you think about the nine different missions that you have, right? The county dredge, exactly. the this, the that. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Uh, all right. You so. really have to watch the penny. Mm -hmm. We do. Mm -hmm. We do. We also have a dredge enterprise fund. Okay. Um, and uh, we also have the Cape Cod Commission budget. The good thing is the Cape Cod Commission also has a fee and a revenue source directed to underwrite the services at the commission, which we can talk about later. Okay. Uh, we have a capital budget, uh, FY24, which is the one we just adopted, was $2.2 uh, million. And it's important to note that um, here at the bottom, we talk about leveraging federal and state grants. The county is very good at being able to attract federal and state funds to help underwrite some of the programs and services that we undertake. For example, our dredge department. Um, which is very active in Falmouth and all sorts of other all sorts of other communities on the Cape, but we're very good at getting grant monies to underwrite some of our dredging costs and for the purchases purchase of equipment. And so our county department heads are very skilled at getting funds. So you have great administrators, is what you're saying? That's able to tr find the grants and yes. then get there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. we're we're blessed in Barnstable County. We have a terrific um, lineup. Uh, I would call it an all-star cast okay. of uh, <laughs> department heads that uh, really are very, very good at uh, doing their jobs and serving the people of Barnstable County. Terrific. So let's talk just briefly about the role of Barnstable County, and this might be a good place to stop and have a conversation about some of the uh, key issues that we're wrestling with. So what's the role of the county? Um, again, our work is to transcend, deal with the issues that transcend political boundaries, that go beyond the ability of one particular community to address. So, for example, we had the public health pandemic, COVID-19. Right. Um, the county set up clinics, helped facilitate access to vaccines, provided a hotline to provide information to the residents of Barnstable County. So it played a, a, really a tremendous role in helping uh, the various communities deal with that crisis. We also are very involved in protecting the Cape's water quality. We have a regional water quality initiative. We're very involved in affordable housing and helping coordinate or develop regional solutions to some other pressing issues, uh, substance abuse. We provide mm -hmm. a lot of support there. Uh, we're very focused on doing more in the area of solid waste management, for example, because mm -hmm. solid waste costs are going up. We also provide funding, programs, and services to protect the quality of life for everybody who live, everyone who lives here on the Cape. And so, um, in a minute, let me just, I'll go through some of those departments and how they operate. Now, the last time I was on your show, we talked about the machine gun range. Yes. Right? You'll see nothing in our charter, and you'll see nothing in our literature that identifies all the issues that we really were involved in. But it's amazing the number of issues that we're called upon to address. The most recent one has obviously been focused on the military base and the area called the Upper Cape Water Supply Reserve and this proposal to construct a, a machine gun range. Um, we also are very involved in getting timely updates on the work going on with respect to the re repairs as well as plans to develop the, the new replacement bridges right. over the Cape Cod Canal. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you won't see this in our charter or in our literature, but we really try to keep abreast of the major issues facing the people here of the Cape and finding ways to set, sort of facilitate solutions. Uh, we're very good at convening stakeholders, bringing various parties together, and see how we can speak with one voice to whether it's the federal government and our congressional delegation, or to Beacon Hill, our legislators, the governor, the administration. Oftentimes, we have found in, in, in dealing with previous issues that if we can speak uh, on an issue in a united voice and a united position, bringing people together and having sort of a consensus perspective on what ought to be done, we can be the most effective probably region you know, in the Commonwealth. Um, and you also have a lot of research, right, for towns to sort of avail themselves of. Uh, for instance, traffic, uh, maybe a planning department is worried about 
about that. They can go to the county and say, what can you tell us to do here, right? right. Is that right? Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our departments collect an enormous amount of information. Data collection. Exactly. Yeah. The Cape yeah. Cod Commission alone is just sort of encyclopedic with all the data that they collect. Um, and one area in particular is obviously traffic and transportation. They keep statistics and take road counts in virtually every nook and cranny on Cape Cod. And so we've got a pretty good handle on not just the traffic, but also trends. And we make this information available to the individual towns so that they can make decisions on matters that may not necessarily be regional in scope, but may be very unique to that one community. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I know, for example, in my hometown of Yarmouth, the Cape Cod Commission is looking at a particular section of our town where we seem to be getting significant traffic volumes. They aren't necessarily related to anything that's going on in a neighboring town or might be a regional problem, but it's become a very thorny local issue. And so we have very, very talented transportation planners and analysts that can help us figure out, okay, what, what do we need to do better in this particular area to help facilitate a better flow of travel. And the way that translates down to local was uh, mm -hmm. just the other day I was at a ZBA meeting and one of the attorneys said, you know, you might want to refer to the Cape Cod Commission. The county's keeping information on exactly. this. They might be able to help you decide where to put that stop sign and, mm -hmm. you know, really helpful stuff. Exactly. Yeah. That, that kind nitty of gritty, really. Nitty gritty, yeah. but sometimes it's that nitty gritty detailed information that can make, a, make the difference in solving a problem. Um, you know, you'll be reading reports in the newspapers about water quality, uh, yes. particularly with the summer season and beaches being open or closed or cyanobacteria impacting local ponds. You know, we do testing on water quality testing, you know, throughout the Cape, and that information is vital in terms of protecting public health. So um, there's just a whole range of uh, services uh, that we provide that tackle uh, regional issues. And, and, and sometimes um, it can be a bit of a surprise to find out that the county is, 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 um, is immersed itself in tackling some of these challenges. Ah, testing innovative septic tanks for one thing, right? Which that's they do perfect. on the joint base, right? Yes, yeah. that's, that's a perfect. Yeah. Um, now, it's who would have thought that we would have in Barnstable County a group of professionals yeah. that are experts in understanding septic system technology in determining whether or not an innovative technology might do the job, right? So with the Department of Environmental Protection promoting the use of innovative systems, you know, we're ahead of the game because here in Barnstable County, the county has run for many years a test center to help test and evaluate the performance of innovative technologies. And they've done some impressive work. Mm -hmm. So if we are gonna try to innovate our way through this uh, water quality crisis to some degree, um, having a test center right here in our own backyard is a huge plus. And that innovation is, excuse me, that innovation is happening on Joint Base Cape Cod, right? Right. What we mm -hmm. what what happens is is we take we divert a flow of effluent from the housing on the base uh -huh. and and elsewhere, and um, its 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 characteristics are very comparable to what you would find in our residential subdivision or a, an area with lots of homes. And then that waste is diverted to this test bed. Yes. And then you run that wastewater through various technologies. Eventually it's collected and then brought to the base treatment plant. And then another form of innovation might be, this might be a good time to ask you about they're thinking about starting composting exactly. on Joint Base Cape Cod, uh, food composting for scraps. Um, right. Is that something that you think is viable, could work? Oh, very much so. Um, Maybe even for energy, is that right? Very much so. Okay. Um, fortunately, the Upper Cape Towns have, have their own individual solid waste committees looking at this issue. Uh, uh -huh. We're blessed that there's significant talent Yes. in our communities, particularly in Falmouth. And um, the county is interested in working with these various organizations to see what we can do and help divert uh, a, a segment of the waste stream, particularly the organic waste, finding ways to compost it or deal with it in other acceptable ways so that we can reduce the overall volume of solid waste and find ways to put some of this 
some of this material to more productive use. So is the county really the mover and shaker on that or do the towns come to the county? I think to do something regionally, it, it, it really involves both the towns and the county because what we've done at the county level is we funded a series of studies to help figure out uh, what the volume is overall and, and what's happening in the solid waste markets, um, what kind of regional collection facilities could we establish that might be of interest to the various towns on the Cape, specifically, particularly the Upper Cape towns. Yeah, we're very interested in it here. Yeah, yeah our so, Solid Waste Advisory Committee. So I've been making the rounds meeting and talking to people in uh, each of the Upper Cape towns about uh, what their solid waste needs are. Um, we have a department, believe it or not, and it's Cooperative Extension. We'll talk about them in a couple of minutes, but there's sort of, that's the department where we have the experts on this. And uh, they're the ones that help make us smart so that we can find better ways to partner with the towns to solve the problem. So it might, this might be a good time to go to our first department on our list, and we'll talk about this real quick. This is Children's Cove, so yeah. if we can get that slide up. So Children's Cove, they are a child advocacy center. Yeah. And uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, Children's Cove, they provide a child-friendly trauma-informed, multidisciplinary response to child victims of sexual abuse, physical abuse, commercial sexual exploitation, and children who particularly witness domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And through the use of evidence-based programs, community partnerships, educational outreach, and awareness efforts, Children Coves provides a set of comprehensive and actually collaborative response services to the survivors of child abuse. I and think you just got that in Martha's Vineyard as well now, right? Do you have a new? Yes, the, we have, um, when we created, this is, a, this is another interesting uh, discussion point because um, when we created Barnstable County, in the charter are specific provisions to provide services to other counties. So um, the way we established, the way Barnstable County was established is to not only help towns here on the Cape, but maybe we can help neighboring counties. Help Dukes County now. Yeah. Right. So well. there's specific language in the charter that requires us to enter into cooperative agreements with neighboring counties and then work uh, to provide services to the neighboring counties. And typically what we'll do is we will not only provide the service, but we will look to where the neighboring county can provide funding to help underwrite the cost of delivering the service in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case of Children's Cove, we were providing services uh, to vineyard um, children, but we found that actually it makes better sense in terms of servicing the children uh, and the victims of abuse. It's far better to serve them as close to the home mm. as possible mm -hmm. rather than having to hop on the ferry and, and navigate mm -hmm. the traffic and the transportation system here. So I, I have to give a lot of credit to um, the staff at Children's Cove for really sort of elevating this issue. Also the district attorney has is, 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 is mm -hmm. elevated this issue. Um, he's, he's made this a priority. So we're fortunate that you know, when this issue got to our attention, we were able to work with them and to, and to develop an agreement with Dukes County. So it's a very exciting initiative. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So the next slide, let's go to the Department of um, Human Services. Um, and this is a fairly, it's an interesting photograph. These are some of the folks that work uh, with um, our Human Services Department. And it says, creating a healthy, connected Cape Cod. Next slide. Uh, some of the regional initiatives. First off, it's important to mention Healthy Aging, uh, Cape Cod. This is a collaborative effort uh, among organizations here on Barnstable County that uh, are aligned to exist, aligned to basically develop and enhance existing services to help residents age in place successfully. We all know that Cape Cod's getting older mm -hmm. and we have a growing aging and elderly population that is also in need of services. But people by and large want to age in place. They want to, you know, live their, you know, retirement years at home. And so how can we do that? So this is a way we can bring all the stakeholders, a lot of organizations together and, and work on that together. We also have a housing and homelessness initiative 
Um, that is a problem that is regional in nature. Mm -hmm. And obviously housing, affordable housing, has become a, a crisis. Maybe one of our biggest problems, really. It, it has, one it, top it, five, at least, yeah? Well, I, yeah, you know, when you think about all of the challenges facing officials here on Cape Cod, at times it's overwhelming, but definitely housing is at the, the, right up there at the top of the list. And Shine, which is such a good idea, you know, to help yes. people when they turn 65, you have to sign up for Medicare, yes. right? So Shine helps people do that, it right? It does. It does. Shine is, um, is uh, part of this is fund federally funded, and um, to be able to provide free counseling to Medicare beneficiaries. The insurance business, let's just be straight about it. It's very confusing. You can easily get lost. In you the, need a PhD. The, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. A PhD. And yeah. these folks are there. They make no money. Uh, uh, they don't sell any products. They're there specifically and exclusively to provide informed guidance uh, to, to, to residents here on the Cape Cod that uh, obviously in Medicare, but also are trying to navigate the system and figure out what kind of health, supplemental health insurance they might need. You're right. So the next slide, let's go to that one, uh, the Department of Health and Human, uh, excuse me, Human Services. Um, we have regional initiatives in a number of areas. Behavioral health is an area that's growing. Um, so our staff will convene uh, regional work groups and uh, networks involving other organizations to find ways to sort of strengthen the, 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 the overall behavioral health needs system, care system here on Cape Cod. Um, we've been doing a lot of work on the Outer Cape lately um, and have assisted in terms of providing grant funding and other sources to help staff up uh, areas where there are real gaps in the system out there. We also are very involved in substance abuse prevention. We have the Barnstable County Regional uh, Substance Addiction Council. This has been an, an incredible group. They were established in 2014 and uh, they bring together a whole range of stakeholders to the table so that we can deal with substance abuse in a very, very comprehensive way. Really tackle it. And right. they, they, they do an incredible job. Uh, next slide. And um, I, lo I love it when we show sl have slides showing our people either in the field doing work um, or the constituents that they're serving. So you see We've got a nurse here uh, administering a vaccine. We've got one of our technicians out there doing water quality testing. And then on the far right, you can see one of our uh, lab technicians at our water quality lab. Next slide. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, I think, again, you, it's, it's difficult to differentiate sometimes between the, the, the important services that we provide. Um, Department of Health and Environment, it plays an incredibly important role in promoting and helping sustain uh, adequate public health here on Cape Cod and protecting the environment. And oftentimes they're so interconnected. Mm. Protecting the environment mm -hmm. is uh, very, very important in terms of protecting public health. Mm -hmm. So we have a public health nursing division. We have a tobacco control program. We do regional emergency planning. Uh, we do some environmental protection, um, inspection services, monitoring underground tanks and landfills, hazardous material safety reporting, uh, occupational risk assessment and training for the towns. Um, we do a uh, beach monitoring, as I mentioned before, but we also monitor private wells. If you think your private well may be getting traces of a chemical, or you're concerned about its water quality, the Barnstable County has a, the capability to provide that kind of testing service. So these are just, a, this is sort of the core group of services that we provide that protect public health and the environment. Next slide. So this is the slide that we have on the test center, which we were, we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. This is, if you would go out to the base and you saw this sign, um, you could just drive around the corner and there it would be. And it's full. Uh, we have basically, we have a, a variety of uh, innovative septic systems that we're testing out there. And uh, we're learning a lot. Next slide. So this was established in uh, 1999. I worked on this when I worked for Congressman Studs, um, uh, George Hoyfelder, and uh, from Barnstable yeah. County, 
Falmouth resident. Mm -hmm. George uh, approached Congressman Studs uh, along with Dr. Joe Costa from the Buzzards Bay Project, and then in a, a project that many people in Falmouth are familiar with. They approached the congressman and asked him if he'd be interested in helping getting this test center up and running out on the base. And he said yes. And then uh, so uh, I was assigned to work with George and Dr. Costa to pull this off and get it up and running. So it's been there since 1999. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, that's amazing. It, yeah. it is amazing. And uh, it is a, we, we call it a premier on-site wastewater treatment research facility. And in the aftermath of these DEP regulations, uh, it's going to play in a more important role in helping us develop innovative solutions to wastewater problems here on Cape Cod. Next yeah. slide. This is another important program, the Aqua Fund. Yes. Um, yeah. We used to call it the Septic System Loan Fund. Um, but for many people, that just wasn't sexy enough. This so, is sexy, Aquafund. So yeah. there you go, <laughs> Aquafund. And what we're doing is we're providing low interest loans uh, to residents of uh, Cape Cod uh, that need to upgrade their septic system. Um, and obviously with these new regulations, there will be quite a few folks that will need some financial help. Um, or they may need help tying in to a sewer system. Right. So we Two different things, a connection or exactly. get yourself a better septic exactly. system. Exactly. Yeah, excellent. So the Aqua Fund is there to provide um, uh, low cost financing to help okay. folks deal Based with this problem. Based upon income. Yep. Okay. And uh, you can go to, you can just Google Aqua Fund Barnstable County and you'll get, it'll take you right to the page. So let's go to the next slide. Um, this is a program that touches not every community on Cape Cod, but does have uh, an impact Cape wide. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to stay on the slide for a second. You can see just you can see how dynamic absolutely uh, the coastal, coastal exactly. Yeah. And and one of the reasons why th this photograph sort of says says a lot is because as the sands and as our coastal resources change. We have areas, inlets, waterways that show up. And uh, in order to gain access for mariners, fishermen, coast guard, harbor masters, public safety people, mm -hmm. folks that are going out engaged in a search and rescue mission, being able to get in and out of our waterways is vital, um, not just to the economy, but also for public safety. Yeah, absolutely, for public safety. And when you think about it, some people just think, oh, the dredge is just to make someone else's beach nice. But in fact, um, so important for our blue economy, for all the mariner work, exactly. all the fishermen. Right. Yeah, right. it's important. So let's go to the next slide. It's not just tourism. Right, so we've been doing this for 25 years. Uh, we're not only dredging and making harbors accessible, but we're also taking the dredge material, the sand, and putting that sand on the beach. So it's really not just a dredging program, but it's also a shoreline protection program. Oh. And um, right now we're trying to get into um, Mashpee. The dredge has been in Chatham, in Harwich. Uh, it makes the rounds. Uh, the challenge that we have these days is that we've got demands, uh, significant demands for the use of the dredge. And two dredges, is that right? You yes. have two dredges. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I've been out on the the, the uh, I've been out on the dredges, oh, and wow. I've had uh, we've got an incredibly talented group of people. This is not easy work. This is very very difficult work, and they just do a wonderful job. Uh, I'm very impressed. Um, if you want to have a viable commercial fishing industry on Cape Cod, right? That's important that's for right, the blue economy. The blue economy. Then yeah. um, having a county thinking. dredge program is vital. It's almost essential. And replenishing beaches, yeah. yeah exactly. Right. Next slide. This is the Cape Cod Cooperative Extension. Uh, they provide natural resources, education services. Uh, this to one I think County. you should spend some time on because I don't think people realize how many things you can learn if you connect with these people. Uh, no, yeah, that's, that's an excellent point. The next slide, please. Master gardeners. And yes. Yeah. So here's some of the programs that the, the Cooperative Extension is involved in. We have programs on agriculture, marine resources, horticulture, aquaculture, water quality, recycling, household hazardous waste collection, and management, nutrition, food safety, youth development, and environmental education uh, on various issues on Cape Cod. We have programs involving master gardening, 
uh, the household hazardous waste collection, which goes on in each town. And it's amazing That's the right. value of that service. I mean, all of these are important services, mm -hmm. but it's amazing how many of these services we provide region-wide at a very manageable, minimal mm -hmm. cost. Like the dredge, much, much exactly. cheaper than a private. Tick education alone, you know, so helpful. Really great stuff. Uh, you know, Larry Dapsis, who's, uh, who does a lot of the tick education, he's probably one of the most you know, well-known figures from county government around the Cape, more so than the commissioners. Um, the, he's, he's everywhere, and it's incredible, uh, the people that listen. He's like the E.F. Hutton of ticks. <laughs> when he speaks, everybody listens. No one wants a tick. Exactly. <laughs> and, right. uh, and as I mentioned, we do a lot of uh, help with our town. We provide a lot of help with our towns on municipal solid waste and recycling. Um, what's happening in, 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 you know, today is that this is all changing in a, in a, in a very fast-paced way. We literally, as a region, need to do a much better job in reducing the overall volume of solid waste. Um, it's critical both in terms of reducing the cost of solid waste management, you know, reducing tipping fees, as, they, as tipping they're called. Tipping fees, right. 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 The um, poundage the, price that we pay. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. The overall cost is going up, and one way to do it is to find the things that are compostable, mm -hmm. the things that are more recyclable, take them out of the waste stream, waste stream and find ways to uh, better is, utilize food them. Food is super heavy, and they think that'll be one of the best ways to get the tipping fees down. Yeah. I think so, too. There's also the way, in, in some cases, if you have a certain volume of organic waste, you can, uh, there are these anaerobic digesters that are capable of generating electricity or energy and so oftentimes you're, you're starting to see uh, initiatives where that's part of the overall program. So we can not only... Yarmouth did that, did they not? Are they looking into the it? The town of Yarmouth has received funding to study and consider developing uh, such an anaerobic digester. Um, the studies that have been done by Barnstable County in collaboration with the various committees in the towns uh, have basically suggested that perhaps we could support two anaerobic digesters on Cape Cod, one in Yarmouth and one out at Joint Base Cape Cod, where we're already doing some solid waste collection and, uh, and, and solid waste management. That so would be for Falmouth, the Joint Base one, great. Exactly, yeah. so the next slide. Let's not forget... Um, Youth education, here we go, AmeriCorps. AmeriCorps, mm. National Service. Barstable County has had an incredible AmeriCorps program. Next slide. And uh, it's been in place since 1999, we have over 575 alumni who have performed almost a million hours of service, 4,300 land and water projects, 2,500 educational programs, and a recruitment of over 14,000 volunteers for all sorts of community events. This is something that um, is, is, is a program that we're incredibly proud of because what we're doing is we're um, helping mentor and educate our young people in terms of public service in areas where we have some really significant needs. And many of our AmeriCorps projects are in the, in the environmental space, natural resources management space. There's a whole range of things. Uh, we have many of our volunteers uh, this year involved in helping uh, clear brush out of herring runs and, uh, oh, and other yeah. fish ways. And look at that estimated value in volunteer hours, $21 million. And not only did they contribute to their country, but or county, right. I should say in this this case, but they learned so much. So they mm -hmm. bring it on, so they can get another Ex job that teaches even more. And yeah, it's exactly. Great. So it next back. Next slide. Um, Barnstable County. We have an IT department that provides IT services to a number of towns. You'll see here on the drawing that uh, we provide services to the Outer Cape, Truro, and Wellfleet. Uh, we're also providing services to Chatham, Harwich, and Brewster and Bourne. Is that expanding at all? Or? It is. When we did an analysis of sort of the, 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 the financing long term for Barnstable County years ago, uh, one of the recommendations from the consultants and the experts advising us was to really consider investing more resources in IT services because it not only providing valuable services to the towns, and, but we're also generating a revenue volume that can help underwrite. This is, act this is actually something from a regional perspective is a service that really makes sense to provide. Um, for many communities establishing their own IT department 
um, is is way beyond their own capabilities financially. Okay. So by coming together and relying on the county's department, we can provide considerable services at a modest cost, and at the same time provide some revenue for the county to help sustain its operations. So Barnstable County IT. And let's go to the next slide. Um, this is a little bit redundant. Let me just go on to uh, the next slide in the interest of time. The next one here is um, the Cape Cod Center for Public Safety and Training. Oh, we're going to get um, one in Falmouth. Well, in a, in a second. Right okay. now, the focus on the photographs you'll see are firefighters getting trained. Right. Right. Barnstable County for years has been involved in supporting training for our firefighters incredibly important. Uh, next slide. We have um, since 2021 uh, over 800 local firefighters have trained on our equipment and we've set up our equipment with the help of our legislative delegation. Uh, our, all our training equipment these days is largely mobile. Right. So we can actually take our equipment to a department. So we can take a lot of our equipment to Falmouth for mm -hmm. example and we can and it's easier and more convenient and less expensive to train firefighters at the stations, at their workplace. Uh, so we've been doing that for a while now, and uh, our legislators are incredibly helpful uh, in getting the funding uh, and the resources to pull that off. And so in, in, in last year, we began construction on a new modular live fire training prop. And uh, we're very excited about that getting off the mm -hmm. ground. And uh, I see we have a PFAS slide up yeah. there. And uh, let me pull that up. It's yep. not in the sequence that I had, but let me just get to it right now. So okay. um, in addition to our fire training, we also, uh, because we've learned in recent years that fire training with foam, certain foams have PFAS, PFAS, in, PFAS mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and other contaminants that have become a real problem in terms of remediation. Mm -hmm. So. Um, what we've learned from uh, our old firefighting training methods is that some of this material uh, uh, is not only contaminated um, some of the soils and threatened water resources, but uh, may pose potentially health hazards for mm -hmm. firefighters. So we're we're out of that business. So we're not doing that. But we have a but we have to clean it up. But we have to, we mm -hmm. have at our old academy. We have to clean it up. And the county is paying for that right now. You don't the really county, have any the, revenue stream yet to pick it up, right? Well, that's that's the other problem. This is this the, this particular site that we utilized, even though the county had it, we never put our own. It wasn't our foam or our firefighters right. or our personnel. This was the resources that the towns brought. So by Barnstable County taking the lead, we're really addressing a liability that really many of the towns would face, yes. but for Barnstable County. So we're looking at an overall price tag in terms of the cleanup of up to 60 million, and it could go higher. We're still in the process of getting some estimates. So uh, we need to comply with the, uh, the state Massachusetts contingency uh, plan, and uh, we're in the midst of doing a, an assessment and uh, looking at finalizing the design over the next year or so to finalize the design on our remediation program. So this is this is the initial estimate, but there's a chance that it could be a bit higher. So um, so every year, I think you pay six hundred thousand dollars towards it, or is that right? That's well, we actually um, we're paying roughly six hundred thousand and six hundred fifty thousand for uh, one of the pump and treat systems, but we're also paying for this particular site. Uh, we have roughly a two hundred fifty thousand dollar payment associated with operating a uh, treatment plant that protects the water uh, for the town for a portion of the town of Barnstable. Okay. So we have two systems that we're currently taking care of. And when you add up the 650,000 and the 250,000, it's actually approaching a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So on the slide, you'll see it says we anticipate the annual O&M costs to be over a million per year once okay. the final system is done. So that's an expense. Now, in many of our towns that are wrestling with PFAS, they are taking those treatment and remediation costs and financing them largely on water users. Yes. The utilities. The yeah. utilities are the ones bearing the cost of cleanup until a cleanup program, remediation program can be established or towns are able to access settlement dollars 
as you're probably aware, in the newspapers and on the press, there's a lot of talk about settlements with, uh, you know, DuPont, 3M, and a host of other major corporations that were involved in the production of PFAS chemicals. And uh, our hope is, is that some of those settlement dollars can come back uh, to Barnstable County. We're a litigant uh, in, 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 in some of the class action suit activity, and our hope is to get at least some funds back to, to compensate us for our costs. Um, but I don't believe we're going to get anywhere close to what we should be the getting. The $60 million, yeah. yeah because the demands are just so great. Everybody the PFAS pollution it. is just so widespread. Everywhere, yeah. yeah it is. So, so for the public safety now, can we talk about the police training for Falmouth? We're gonna we get can. It. So okay. let's go to the next. I, I don't know what the next slide is, but let's take a look. Here we go, bingo. So this is um, on the Cape Cod Center for Public Safety Training. It references the fire training, but it's also important. Uh, the bottom bullet there says, prior to 2022, the county operated a police training academy. That's and right. This, and this program was transferred over to the State Police Training Commission. The fact that we were able to sustain this and keep this going demonstrated to the Commonwealth that we need to have a facility here on Cape Cod. So by Barnstable County sort of stepping in and providing this kind of, uh, this kind of training, we were able to basically prove to the state that something should be set up here in the Cape. There's been a lot of work done, and uh, fortunately, or we're, we're actually we're quite excited to see a training facility identified, a site identified in Falmouth. Here in Falmouth, I think on Thomas Landers Road, and I also think that they're gonna make the gym available to Falmouth town people when the police aren't using it, so. That's great. You're like a YMCA for us, right? It and is. We can all get, it is. get fit. So when I talk about leverage, this is part of leveraging, right? Uh, the county stepping in, finding ways to continue a service or to provide a service that our communities need, that our municipal workers need, that our residents need. Yeah. And then if there's a way to uh, enable that service to continue without the county, that's great. That's great. So in some cases, we're always looking for ways to transition out of something. I see. Um, you don't want to get bigger, you want to get smaller, ideally. Well, I think what we want to do is have the ability to kind of be lean and nimble, all right? Yes. Having the ability to respond to problems and issues as they arise, do the best we can, leverage other resources. If we can fledge them and they can go off and sustain themselves, that's terrific. We've done that with a whole host of programs. The Cape Light Compact, for example, which is a regional uh, you know, energy saving program, energy conservation program, that was started at Bonstable County and that's been sort of hatched and now operates on its own, incredibly successful, has saved the Barnstable County residents millions of mm -hmm, dollars mm -hmm. in energy costs. So yeah, let's go to the next that's slide. That's a great program. The Cape Cod Commission, actually, we could do a prog program on the Cape Cod Commission all by itself. 100% agree, yep. The that next slide. One. But the Cape Cod Commission is the Regional Land Use Planning Economic Development and Regulatory Agency. It was created in 1990 by the state legislature to serve the citizens in the 15 towns of Barnstable County. Virtually every region has a regional planning agency. And so ours is very unique because we asked the legislature to give our regional planning agencies some additional powers. Um, at what, the what time- What kind of additional powers? Well, we want to have the ability to regulate developments of regional impact for example. Regulation. Right, okay. so if, let's say, you have a superstore or a super complex that's being cited in Falmouth, but it's gonna impact Bourne and impact uh, Mashpee, um, a development of that, of that kind of regional impact needs um, gr greater scrutiny. And uh, up until the time we created the commission, we really had no capacity uh, as, uh, here on Cape Cod to look at big developments, big projects. Um, whether they're housing, commercial, or whatever. So by having the commission uh, have that authority, they've been able to sort of help mitigate uh, certain developments so that the, the regional impacts are much more manageable. And uh, I mean, if we're gonna try to you know, create a sustainable Cape Cod, then uh, finding ways to mitigate broad impacts, minimize them in some way is very, very important. The next slide. The Registry of Deeds. And um, so if, as just about everybody knows, if you're, you're buying a house or selling a house, at right. some point everything is gonna be 
Our finances, right? Recorded yeah. there, yes. And um, the Registry of Deeds is very, very important in terms of funding county government. Um, right. The Let's talk about that funding. Okay. Yeah. All right. So how, how does the county get most of its funding? So the county gets most of its funding through, the bulk of the funding comes through two main sources. One is the Registry of Deeds and, mm -hmm. the, and the real estate transfer tax that they collect. And then the other is an assessment on the towns. Um, Barnstable County, we're able to, um, you know, each town is levied an assessment to cover a portion of the cost of the services. So we have those two main sources. Uh, we do get funds from, you know, other, other sources. So um, the, the, the challenge for us is, unlike municipal governments that can levy fees on property taxes and you have a property tax rate, our revenue sources are relatively fixed and limited. Right. Now, we, our revenue has been able to grow because the real estate market has been reasonably hot and we've been able to uh, derive a significant amount of revenue from that. But, um, uh, you know, going forward, there's, there's no guarantee mm -hmm. that that will be the case. So, um, I don't know how much more you want to talk about the Registry of Deeds. Let's see if we can go on to the next slide. Here we go. This is, this is that we're pretty much approaching the end. I think, um, you know, not too long ago, the county was given a, an award of $41.3 million from the federal government under the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, this was designed to help stimulate the economy and help address some of the, some of the sort of the issues um, and problems and challenges in the aftermath of COVID. So we took our $41 million and broke it up into five different buckets or pots of money. Okay. Yeah, uh, we awesome. allocated 10 million to the towns on the Cape. We allocated a, a chunk to, um, to our small and medium grants program. Uh, and uh, this was a competitive application process um, that was, gave us the opportunity to provide funds to some of the organizations that have been really impacted uh, by COVID and provide direct services to people in need. Um, so you're seeing many of these individual grants went to organizations that provide services to the elderly, mm. food pantries, uh, and other uh, organizations. Um, and it's fairly broadly distributed throughout the Cape. So just about e virtually every segment, every coin, every nook and cranny of Cape Cod uh, benefit. We set aside 11.4 million for a housing grants program and there'll be more in a future program on how that's working and how that's going to work. Um, we did allocate $13 million uh, to various county projects. We have a number of projects. One involves expanding the Alternative Septic System Test Center. Mm -hmm. Another one involves getting equipment, more equipment for our lab to do more water quality testing. So what we've done is, is we've taken a chunk of this money to strengthen our capability in Barnstable County to protect public health right, and to serve right. the people here. And then there's an allocation of funds for admin. So all told, uh, it's a $41.3 million, $41 million program. Next slide. And if you need to find out more about our services and the things that we're doing, you can just go to capecod.gov. That is uh, a little photograph of a laptop with our website. Our award, you. our award winning. Is that award. right? Yes, it Everything is. Everything is a success in yes. Barnstable uh, County. We're blessed. Like I said, we've got great department heads and uh, our communication staff does a wonderful job. That's a, it's a wonderful website. It's easy to navigate. Um, and uh, if you want to know what Barnstable County is doing, any of the work that we're doing, it's very easy to go right to the website, click on it, check out the news section. Or if you want to follow any of our meetings, we have a meetings sort of center where you can check out all the meetings that are going on. It's a beehive of activity, a lot of interesting stuff going on. And uh, I have been on that website and I have watched those meetings and you're right, it's a busy, busy place. It is a yeah. busy place. So it's been great to be here to talk to you about this. And it has been great to have you. Uh, if there's anything that you really want people to know about the county, a takeaway, whether it is something you wish people knew, whether it's something that you think is something that you've worked on that you're amazingly proud of that you'd like to give a little plug for. Mm -hmm. Now's your moment. Now's my moment. Well, I think, um, I think it's, I think 
what needs to be said is that the people that work in Barnstable County in county government are truly de dedicated in terms of serving the people here. 243 employees. You got it. Mm -hmm. And they all work very, very hard. They care deeply. It's a very constituent service oriented uh, county government. And um, I'm proud to be a county commissioner and to work with them. Uh, I'm, I w I've been, I'm, I ne I'm never, I ne I'm never ceased to be amazed at the uh, incredible work that goes on there. It's just, it's constant. Whether it's during COVID, almost any crisis, folks step up and they do a great job. So I'm glad to talk about the programs and the services that we provide. And I really encourage people to become more familiar with county government and, and how it serves the people here in Barnstable County. And I hope this educational sort of uh, forum uh, is, uh, is at least one way to help get the word out. And uh, my hope is that uh, if people will people will take more of an interest in county government and what yeah, we're doing. Absolutely, it's a fascinating subject and there's so much of it. So I hope we'll have you back so you can talk about more things, I'd love deeper to. dives into some of these different groups. And I'd love to. you guys are always adapting to things. So I wanna thank you very much, Mark Forrest. I really appreciate this. I'm sure you people all learned something too. I know I did. Thank you very much for watching Falmouth's Government Leaders Talk. See you next time.